everyone. Today we'll be discussing our latest technical paper, TBM Excavation in Himalayan Geology, over 1,200 meters per month at Barry Babai. Our presenters today are Brad Grothen, PE, Robin's Technical Director, and Missy Eisman, PE, Robin's Project Engineer. My name is Desiree Willis, and I'm Robin's uh, Public Relations Manager, and I'll be moderating today's presentation, which will be formatted as a question and answer session. And with that, let's get started. So Brad, can you tell us a little bit about the Barry Bubai project and what you think are the most interesting aspects of it? Uh, the Barry Bubai project is a hydroelectric project uh, for 48 megawatts of power generation uh, between the Barry River and the Babai River, which we're not creative in coming up with names, hence Barry Babai project. Uh, it also provides year-round irrigation, and so this is located in Nepal. They have some heavy seasonal rainfall, uh, but then they have a long dry season, and so having that year-round water source uh, along with power generation are really some of the more interesting aspects of it. Uh, it's made it a national pride project, so uh, a lot of effort was put forth to make this project happen uh, by a lot of the regional uh, municipalities. And it was also the first project that involved a TBM or mechanized tunneling in Nepal. So it had a number of interesting aspects associated with it. Great. And Missy, I know you visited Nepal early on to discuss the machine design. What were some of the factors um, in why they chose to use a Robbins TBM? Uh, yeah, I mean, this was a high profile case for the Nepalese government, so they really needed a strong machine for the job. And, you know, Robbins has had a proven track record with rock machines, so we really felt like this was good, a good machine for the project. Um, you know, the customer really wanted to have a line tunnel uh, to protect against fault zones. So, you know, to, to keep with this strict timeline that they was really important to the project, we felt that a Robbins double shield was the best machine for the job because my double shields, it has a, a double thrust system. So you can bore at the same time as the segment lining is being built. So this way the tunnel can be constantly advancing. And Missy, what were the ground conditions like and how was the TBM designed for those conditions? Well, for this project, the uh, geological study projected around 823 meters of uh, rock cover and at least one major fault zone, which is a big concern that would project it around 40 cubic meters per second of water. And also a lot of the majority of this tunnel was located between two tectonic thrusts, resulting in ground conditions that can be weak and often fragile. So. You know, we needed to account for this in the design and make sure we had strong uh, support system for these uh, dangerous conditions. So one of the major things we did was we um, we needed to worry about the squeezing ground that could exist. So we stepped the shield and um, incrementally brought down the diameter of the shield towards the tail. So the uh, annular gap around the tail shield had more room in case of squeezing ground. It could contract and reduce the chance of getting stuck. Also, probe drilling is really important. So uh, this machine was equipped with a large number of probe ports in multiple zones. This could give 360 degrees of coverage. And um, by probing and grouting ahead of the machine, it creates a sort of stabilized plug for the ground. And then the machine can bore through that and creating a more stable ground environment. Uh, also, one of the things that in the end didn't get used but we thought as a preventative measure we put for we we thought we'd include shield ports uh radially around the shield in the gripper area to um in case they wanted to add bentonite or other additives and this could act as a lubrication to coat the surface of the shield and keep the machine moving and squeezing ground uh, another aspect that we uh in, installed into the machine was ports around the crown for a possible four polling system. This also wasn't used, but it, we implemented the ports uh, in case it was needed later. So four polling, in essence, we, we have ports in the crown at 22 degrees where they could be drilled and then a rod can be inserted and grouted into place. And this, in essence, creates an overlapping pattern to stabilize the ground above the machine, making for a more stable uh, tunneling environment. Overall, the ground conditions were 
better than projected. So, you know, even though some of these systems weren't weren't used, it just it's easier to plan ahead from the beginning and less expensive to to put these measures in place ahead of time than dealing with the consequences of later not having them and the machine being stuck and all the downtime isn't worth the cost of just having insurance at, at the head ahead of programming these just to have have these systems in place. Thanks, Missy and Brad. Um, I know a key challenge of the project was in how remote it was. How, can you describe what it took to get to the job site and how the machine was transported and launched? Sure. So for a lot of hydroelectric powers, they're obviously located in mountains or, or difficult regions. Uh, this one was no exception. It's located in Nepal's largest wildlife preserve. Uh, so from a transport perspective, obviously these, this isn't an exceptionally large machine, but we still needed to split the machine into multiple pieces. Uh, split shields, split cutter head in order to be able to transport it to site. Uh, it's a wildlife preserve, so our, the roads, while fairly good for Nepal, uh, were still fairly uh, basic roads. It was a couple hour drive if you just take a passenger car, a little bit bumpy, uh, but to get some of these larger loads in took significant amount of time uh, just because of the road conditions. Uh, there's multiple gates you know, the, the wildlife preserve is guarded by the Nepalese army. So there are several stop points or gates that you need to be able to go through uh, and then bridges that needed to be in reinforced to take the high loads associated with the TBM. So not compared to some projects, uh, not exceptionally difficult, uh, but there were cert certainly difficulties and uh, very far away from industry. So and also power generation. So all the power needed to be generated uh, using diesel generators for the TBM and an on-site segment plant was set up. Again, helping minimize uh, the issues associated with its remote location. Okay, and Missy, what were some of the challenges that the crews faced during Tallinn? Well, there were a couple issues that came up, although pretty successful boring tunnel, there was two separate occasions where the machine encountered large amounts of water, around 2,000 liters per minute. And, uh, and the plan was to, they they inspected the ground and luckily they deemed that it, it was stable enough to continually bore through with a slow pace. So in the end, they just had to increase the dewatering pumps and they intens intensified the backfill grouting and were able to slowly make it through that. So saved a lot of time in having to stop and grout. They were, luckily the ground was stable enough they could make it through. There were two occurrences where the machine did become stuck. Uh, at one point, most of the most of the tunnel up to this point was the grain of the rock was perpendicular to the machine, which is the ideal circumstances. But at one point it shifted and became more parallel to the machine. And also the ground on the left-hand side was softer than the right. So it started to veer to the left and as this happened, the machine got stuck. And, and so, you know, they tried to increase the thrust and that wasn't doing it. So in the end, they had to make a small bypass on the right-hand side. And this loosened it up. And, you know, luckily that only took about five days. So it wasn't a huge uh, disaster. But um, there was one other incident where the, a, a quick stoppage happened where there was a large ingress of water and a break out over break over the crown of the machine and these rocks ended up jamming the cutter head uh, to get it moving they had to stop the water because it was so much that they um, ejected about uh, 1200 kilograms of polyurethane grout and this was able to mostly stop the water and then they just applied applied some torque and were able to break loose and push forward and continue boring so overall not too many stoppages and it was a pretty pretty smooth tunnel. Great. And Missy, I have also heard that um, the TBM achieved some really great advance rates. How do you think that they were able to achieve such good rates? Yeah, we had great rates. Um, you know, it was an average of around 700 meters per month with one high month being about 1200 meters. Uh, and, and they ended up completing the project almost a year ahead of schedule, which was really great. And um, you know, it was found that 
the geotechnical baseline report was um, often similar to what they expected, what they found, and oftentimes even better. So that minimized unexpected difficulties and you know kept the machine moving. Uh, a good example of this was they had planned ahead to have two types of segments, one with a higher reinforcement for difficult areas. And they thought around 73% of the segments would be the, the standard segments and 26 the stronger ones. And in the end, they only needed 8% of those stronger ones and they used 92% of the regular segments. So it, it was that was a big factor in helping this machine go so quickly. Um, one of the other things that really helped was the um, the team was very consistent and you know they pre-planned everything and they were very strict and consistent in their maintenance and their cutter cutter changes and really keeping to a strict schedule of of all those you know oftentimes people need to keep a schedule so they'll skip skip maintenance steps and then you end up having a major machine failure or something because people weren't keeping strict with that so i think the crew really played a big factor in in maintaining all the daily um, stuff. And, and they also were daily checking the the face and the tail um, for for ground mapping. So they knew what was coming ahead and and they really took advantage of planning every day of what was ahead of them. Um, another really important factor was, you know, this was a long tunnel, 12 kilometers and and, and towards the end, it takes a long time to get the trains in. So they ended up having more trains and resources by methodically planning out the schedule of supplies. You know, you, you have to have segments to keep this consistent boring. You, you want to always have the supplies you need. So they were meticulous about keeping all the supplies they need on hand and getting the train schedule timed out right. So all those factors really helped to just keep keep all the gears moving and everything on track. So it was pretty successful. Great. And Brad, um, now that the project is complete and you can look back on all of tunneling, would you still recommend a double shield TVM? You know, uh, it's pretty hard to argue with success. Uh, so in 2020, hindsight is always a benefit. So I think the, the double shield machine was absolutely the right choice for this job. Uh, as Missy mentioned, the geology ended up being on the favorable side, which uh, definitely, you know, allowed the machine to make map maximum advance rates. So the contractor was good. So they were able to take advantages of uh, the additional features that, that machine had. And uh, then obviously uh, coming out with a, basically a finished tunnel at the end where you don't have to do, you know, lining after the fact, uh, all really led to a, a successful project. And so I, you know, trying to mess with success would probably be a mistake. And I think things went to plan, which is really what a good project does, proper planning and, and execution. And I think this is a good example of doing that. And given the overall success of the TBM, Brad, what do you think that means for future TBM tunnels in Himalayan rock? Uh, let's for Nepal, in general and just that region i think it's uh was a great project it really showed people what was there i mean any new technology that you're trying to bring into an area there's always some apprehension especially with the amount of investment that's required in a, in a large tunneling project and so it really showed what was possible uh in that region and uh you know all the benefits that can be realized from uh, this this technology being applied uh they were the lower himalayas uh, and, you know, I, like Missy said, the geology was well understood and, and ended up being a little bit friendlier. Uh, but we have obviously additional technology that can be applied to the machine as we evaluate all these different projects that are there uh, that have been proven out. Uh, that can be very successfully, I think, applied to projects in the country. So you need for a successful project, obviously, buy in uh, from a lot of different parties besides just the technology. Uh, to make for a successful project and this project had that and i think uh, it really helps for future projects seeing uh, this level of success great and i have one last qu question for both of you so if you could each summarize today's presentation into one key takeaway for our viewers what would it be 
You know, I think I think planning is so important. I, I feel like, you know, knowing the knowing the surroundings, knowing the ground conditions, knowing, you know, what what to prepare for was really successful on this project and and planning ahead by applying, you know, uh, s equipment to the machine that that could save you in the end and, and important for situations, especially in in the mountains. It's difficult to know, you know, and, and also just really sticking to um, you know, that your schedule and and maintaining the machine is so important. So I think I think those really helped in making a successful project. And a lot of complex projects, uh, there are a lot of different hurdles that need to be overcome and how you overcome those is really key to success. Uh, it, this project had a great owner that was very dedicated to making this project happen uh, and a, a strong contractor and I think a well proven technology and then of course uh, the geology was uh you know su supported the overall project but when there are difficulties having uh that owner strong contractor having that relationship uh, along with good equipment is really key to making it a success and an example of that i mean like i said they had had generators on site so it can be as simple as making sure nepal had a fuel shortage for a little while there and the owner worked with the contractor to make sure that they had what they needed complete that project. And that's just an, an example of, you know, something that we take for granted that needs to be overcome for that project to, to move forward. Great. Well, thank you, Brad and Missy. This was a great informative session. And for our viewers, be sure to check out some of our other technical paper recordings from 2020 conferences, which will be released throughout the year on our website, therobinscompany.com. Thanks. Thank you.